Thanks for staying with us. Time now for Africa News with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, she can't be trusted. The leader of South Africa's main opposition party denounces her old friend. Activist Nampile Rampele backs out of a deal to run for president alongside the Democratic Alliance a week after going public with the plan. Also, more angry protests in Mombasa in the wake of a mosque raid by police. 129 people face terror charges. Authorities are accused of launching a war on Muslims. And France is on the eve of its first ever trial of a suspect in Rwanda's 1994 genocide. Pascal Simbikangwa faces charges of complicity in the genocide and crimes against humanity. This over the mass killings in which around 800,000 people died. First up, the leader of South Africa's main opposition party slammed activist Mampile Rampele for backing out of a political deal that would have seen her running as president on behalf of the Democratic Alliance. Rampele reportedly changed her mind after facing a backlash from within her, her own smaller Ahang party. Nicola Schumer has the story. Last week, they were hugging each other. This Monday, the two political leaders held separate press conferences. Mampila Rampele of the small Ahong party said she would no longer be the presidential candidate of the main opposition movement, the Democratic Alliance known as DA. Some members in both parties have shown unhappiness at the announcement. Did we rush into it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Can opposition parties come together after elections? Of course. The argument was about whether Rampilla's party would have continued to exist if she ran for the DA. The leader of that movement, Helen Zilla, responded to accusations by the ruling party, the ANC, that she had tried to use Mampila Rampele simply because of the colour of her skin. She has a worldwide reputation as an academic, as a doctor and as a manager. She's also black. That is a very powerful combination in the South African context, very powerful indeed. And we can't say that race doesn't matter and is irrelevant. Analysts said the incident will hurt the reputations of both politicians. The only winner is the ANC's candidate, the incumbent Jacob Zuma, who was already the strong favorite. The date of the general election has not been announced, but it could be held as soon as April. Nigeria's ruling People's Democratic Party suffered its most high-profile flight in a recent wave of defections. Former Vice President Atiku Abu Bakr's left President Goodluck Jonathan's PDP to join the opposition, saying that he believes the country needs a two-party system. The move from the 2011 presidential candidate comes a week after 11 senators left to back the All Progressives Congress, that's the APC. Now, it heaps further pressure on Jonathan and the PDP ahead of elections next year. The PDP has won every national poll since 1999, but last year lost its majority in the lower house of parliament. Kenyan police on Monday tear-gassed crowds of Muslim youths rioting for a second day in the port city of Mombasa. The youth were protesting against a weekend raid on a mosque in the city in which more than 100 people were arrested. The operation is part of a crackdown on Islamist recruitment networks by authorities. And tensions amongst Muslim communities are running high. If officers were fired upon when they burst in on the mosque in Majengo on Sunday. Several people were killed in yesterday's clashes. The latest number has taken the toll to three. Our Duncan Woodside brings us more from Nairobi. The police spokesman's revised death toll up from one yesterday comes despite him telling me that all the deaths were recorded at the scene of yesterday's clash. Other sources indicate that the death toll is much higher. One legal source I spoke to this evening claimed that at least eight people had been killed, including four lying unclaimed at a mortuary, two who were buried yesterday, and a further two who have allegedly subsequently died in hospital. 125 people today appeared in court in Mombasa, where they were charged with terrorism offences, according to the police, and they'll be held in custody for at least the next five days. Separately, here in Nairobi, the capital, four men appeared in court. They were charged with planning and orchestrating the bombing of a cafe just outside the entrance to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport late last month. The police initially denied that this attack had taken place, saying instead that a light bulb had exploded and fallen into a bin. Nobody was injured in that incident. Duncan Woodside there for us in Nairobi. 
Central African Republic now, where five days of clashes between Muslims and Christians in the town of Borda have left at least 75 people dead. Meanwhile, in the capital, Bongi, Muslim militia fired on Burundian peacekeepers in some of the fiercest clashes since early December. Interreligious tensions have escalated since the mainly Muslim Suleika rebels took over last year. They've been disbanded, but fighters continue to terrorize communities. This report on the northern town of Sibut seized back from Suleika over the weekend. Peacekeepers in the Central African Republic recaptured the key town of Sibut from rebel fighters 180 kilometers north of the capital, Bangui. It took about two hours and we didn't capture any Seneca rebels because they had fled earlier during the night. Several residents took advantage to pillage and destroy homes belonging to Muslims who were accused of helping the rebels. They decided to abandon their homes and to flee. French soldiers intervened to stop the acts of revenge. Open-air markets are slowly coming back to life, but there's very little to sell. I am happy that the Seleka left and proud that the foreign troops came here to help us. The anti-Balaka Christian militias wear good luck charms. They regret that they didn't have enough weapons or ammunition to free the city themselves and to prevent the final acts of violence. Before the arrival of the peacekeepers, there were killings. This morning, there were bodies floating in the river. A team from the Red Cross began the gruesome task of searching for bodies. It didn't take them long to find one washed up on the riverbank. Details of the will of late South African anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela revealed that he shared out all his almost three million euro estate between his family, personal staff, schools and the ruling party, the ANC. Now, his wishes were revealed two months after the 95-year-old's passing in December. Half of his estate goes to his wife, Grasa Machel, whilst the ANC, which Mandela led to victory in 1994, could receive between 10 and 30 percent of his royalties. The details of his will comes amidst an ongoing feud between his family over his legacy. Well, France is on the eve of its first ever trial of a suspect in Rwanda's 1994 genocide. Pascal Simikangwa, former head of Kigali's intelligence agency, is accused of complicity in the mass killings and of crimes against humanity. Well, France is still criticized by Rwanda for allegedly providing a safe haven for genocide suspects, and Simikangwa's trial will be closely followed by both governments. Our reporters, Eve Irvine and Sylvain Russo, have the story. France's genocide hunters. For the past 14 years, this couple has given every spare minute to reading, researching and trying to track down suspects involved in the Rwandan genocide. Why did we take on the job? Simply because there were criminals here and the justice system wasn't doing anything about it. We're not professional investigators, but we decided we had to start somewhere, so we would just take it one case at a time. Look at that specific suspect. Where was he? What's being said about him? We need to go and check if that's true. On April 6, 1994, Rwandan President Juvenal Habyarimana, a Hutu, was killed after his plane was shot down. Hutus who were in power accused the minority Tutsis of being behind the attack, although the case remains unresolved to this day. The genocide began. Within 100 days, over 800,000 people were killed, the vast majority of them Tutsi. As the violence swelled, a group of Tutsi rebels who had been exiled in Uganda fought their way back into Rwanda. Well armed, they fought to save their people and caused the Hutus to flee. It was the Gautiers who pressed charges against Pascal Simbikangwa back in 2009. A lot of people say he distributed weapons and gave orders to kill Tutsis if they showed up at checkpoints. The proof we have is in witness accounts. There's relatively little in terms of written proof in Rwanda, but when you have many, many witnesses saying the same thing, you can conclude it's the truth. Pascal Simbikangwa stands accused of complicity in genocide and complicity in crimes against humanity. He denies all charges. For his lawyers, the case is clear. There is no substantial evidence against him.
A former soldier, Simbi Kangwa, worked in the intelligence services and came from the same region as President Habyarimana. A connection many see as proof of guilt, but it's a shortcut his lawyers don't accept. Pascal Simbikangwa was not close to the government. He had great admiration for President Habyarimana, who happened to come from the same region as he did. He was part of the presidential guard, but that doesn't make him close to power. He didn't make the decisions, absolutely not. Simbi Kangwa's trial is France's first on the Rwandan genocide, and his defence team fears this could play against him. Twenty years after the events, France's first trial is to begin on Tuesday, February 4th, with a verdict expected on March 14th. We'll, of course, be following that story as the trial opens tomorrow. But that is it for me for today. I'll hand you back now to Mark Owen with more news and headlines from around the world. Georgia, thank you very much, Neil. George, Georgia Carmen Smith back with more African news in her two slots throughout life from Paris uh, tomorrow. For now, we'll take a short break. After that, it's more world news. We also have sport for you, too. Why Super Bowl is making them dance in the streets in Seattle. Stay with us. <laughs>